Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Well, I said last week that we were going on hiatus until Thanksgiving. That's what I thought, but events uh, led to a change of plans, and by events, I'm referring to the death of Ed Asner at the age of 91. Now, Asner, of course, was an acting legend. We'll talk more about that after the podcast. And I also knew that he had done some radio work, having been one of the founding members of L.A. Theater Works which I wrote about actually in a recent series I did on the American audio drama tradition. They started doing audio drama back in 1996. Learning of Mr. Asner's death, I did some more research and found he had appeared at the National Radio Theater over in Chicago in the 80s and that he did actually appear in a Golden Age radio program. In fact, two separate episodes of The Eternal Light. And I chose the one where it seemed like he had the more prominent role. And even in this one, his part isn't particularly huge. And I'll warn you that you might wonder if it's actually the Ed Asner. Because there are a few hints of like the uh, trademark hallmarks of Asner's voice. I caught a few hints of it when the character of Johnny was speaking in this episode, and I also went back and watched a little clip of him on an episode of Decoy from a couple years later, and the voice matches. It's just when he made this uh, episode, he was 26 years old, and no 26-year-old should have a voice that sounds like Ed Asner's as we know him today. Not even Ed Asner did. So we're going to bring you an episode of The Eternal Light. Original air date, April the 22nd, 1956. And the title is, A Man is Not a Thing. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually in the tabernacle of the congregation, and it shall be a statute forever in your generation. The Eternal Light The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations present The Eternal Light, a program which comes to you under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Today's program, A Man Is Not a Thing, is by Rhea Weinstein. When I awoke, I knew the dawn had broken. Beyond the curtain and the blind and the shutter, I knew the sky was growing light. My wife was asleep beside me in the small, clean room of our hotel in Haifa. I don't know what woke me. It wasn't the heat. It would be cool for a few hours yet. Perhaps I was restless because I knew the ship was out there in the bay. It would dock in the morning. Yom Tov Shabbat was on that boat. Yom Tov and 740 more Moroccan Jews. From Casablanca by way of Marseille. I found his name on the passenger list at the offices of the Jewish agency. It was ironic 
that on the last day of our visit to Israel, I should finally find the man I'd been hoping to meet all along. I'd looked for him in every kibbutz, every settlement, every cafe we visited, and even on every bus we boarded. When we toured Jerusalem, I could hardly pay attention to what our guide was saying because I kept one eye open for Yom Tov. He had said he was going to Jerusalem, and I believed him. Let's see, how old must he be now? He was about 16 then. That was 1942 in Casablanca. Casablanca, broiling in the sun, chilly in the shade. November 1942. The German army was expected. It was rumored in the ghetto that the Vichy French were preparing a welcome, a small courtesy that would endear them to the conqueror. A massacre of the Jews. In earlier times, when a people grew bitter and angry, it was policy in some countries to turn upon the strangers in their midst, the Jews. After the murderous purge, the populace was quieted for a while. And Jews everywhere in the world felt another layer of fear being packed away in the marrow of their bones. Now it was the Nazis' turn. A miracle was needed for the Jews of Casablanca. A miracle happened. It was not the Germans who came, it was the American army. One day, some American boys went sightseeing. Look at that guy sitting cross-legged, playing his flute. Just like in the movies. He's selling something. What is that stuff, I wonder? Spices, I think. Look at him. A bundle of rags and bones. He's just a kid. Don't you wish we could talk to him? Maybe we can. How? Can you speak Arabic? What makes you think he's an Arab? This is the Mela. The ghetto. You mean he's a Jew? I don't know, but they say when you're in a foreign country and you don't know the language, try Yiddish. Donna, you're a genius. Let's try it. Hey, boy. Fella? Hey, mister. What do you call these guys, anyway? Search me. Try, uh, hey, you. Okay. Hey, you. Que? Comment? Comment? Hey, that's French. How's your French, Al? Terrible, like my Yiddish. You try, Johnny. Wait a minute. Yiddish isn't their language. These are Sephardic Jews. Well, what then? Maybe Hebrew, French, Arabic, I don't know. Well, let's try. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom. 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 Hey, we're getting someplace, Johnny. Ami Yehudi. Yehudi. That's it. He understands. Israelite? American? You bet your life. We saw him many times after that, as often as we could. We struggled along in tortured French, scanty Hebrew, and some English that Yom Tov picked up. Gestures helped, but it was the mutual goodwill that saw us through. One day, he took a sightseeing. Don't go there, Excellency. Don't go into that dark alley. Why not, Yom Tov? Don't people live there? Mm. Well, why do they call mm. you Yom Tov? And for goodness sake, stop calling me Excellency. <laughs> You're confusing him. One question at a time. He's still afraid of you. Afraid of me? Yes, you're pretty noisy, you know. So I make a lot of noise. Is that right, an excellency? The uniform adds weight to the sound. <laughs> In this part of the world, the people are divided into two parts. The master and the slaves. Being a Jew makes you anybody's slave. Automatically. What a deal. Boy, give me Brooklyn any time. I'd show this kid something. Don't go down this alley, please. Why not? What's different about this one? Smells just the same, if not worse, than any other alley in the Mela. It's the animals. Is this where the animals are kept? Some of the families keep animals. Animals? And people, too? I wouldn't be surprised if they all live together. Oh, yes, all live together. In one house? Well, sometimes in one room. Wow. And no water. Oh, we can buy water. Oh, look out, sir. Hey, 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 hey you miserable bum. I don't care where you're going. Oh, oh, you called him a bad name. He would have killed you if he knew. Well, the wheels of his cart almost ran over my foot. It is the water carrier. He would have killed you if he knew. If he knew what? If he knew you were Jews. 
In his country, Jews may not wear uniforms. Thank God he did not know. Why can't Jews wear uniforms here? They aren't citizens. They're subjects of the Sultan. What the Sultan says is law. There's no appeal. They sure get pushed around. I'd like to see anyone try to push me around. In your country, they do not spit on you? Spit on me? Look, I'm a person, a human being. I'm not a, not a thing to be spat upon and pushed around. Relax, buddy. Nobody's doing anything to you. Take it easy. Yum you listen to me. If anybody spits on you, if anybody pushes you around, you let him have it, do you hear? Like this. Pow! Right in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. He's laughing. That's the first time I've heard him laugh. <laughs> 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 that, that Brooklyn, it, it must be a fine place. Well, I hope you'll come to Brooklyn someday. Yum Tub will teach you to stand up and fight for your rights. And fight? Oh, with a gun? No, 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 no. No gun. Maybe with a vote. A voice and how things should be run for your own benefit. Yum Tub doesn't have to go to Brooklyn. He can go to Palestine if he's looking to stand up and fight. There's plenty of fight there. I don't care where he goes. So long as he doesn't get pushed around as if he were a thing. He's got to learn that he's a man. A man is not a thing. Look, the water carrier has sold all the water. You mean you have to buy it? Yes, by the skin pool. No plumbing, no sanitation. Don't remind me. Let's get out of here. Does it cost a lot for the family? Not so much. We are fewer since my father died. He was older than 30 years when he died. We used the water first for drinking and cooking. Then for hand washing and prayers. Then the dishes are washed in it. Then my mother washes the clothes in it. Then she scrubs oh, with it. Oh, let's get out of here. Hmm? Come on, this place must be hundreds of years old. Hundreds? You mean thousands. Jews have been in these parts since the time of the Second Temple. Fine, fine. But this Jew is getting out right now. Yom Tov, can you take us to the newer part? There are new buildings on the other side. They say not more than 300 years old. Johnny, come on, will you? Let's get out of here. Wait! I want to ask Yom Tov something. Yes? Listen, Yom Tov. Have you ever heard of a stone, a rock, a big rock with carving on it, about a captain in King David's army? King David's army? The King David of the Bible. You read about him in Chumash. That's Palestine, isn't it, Johnny? No. I'm talking about Morocco, right here. There's a boulder somewhere in these parts with an inscription showing the Jews were a conquering army a couple of thousand years ago. There was a Jewish Berber queen, too. Oh, come off it, Johnny. Let's go. Yom Tov. Would you like to come with us to see that rock? Uh, aren't you forgetting something? We're fighting a war, you know. Don't you know there's a war on, fella? I know. Well, what are you going to do? Go to the general and say, please, sir, may I go off on a safari? If you don't make a big noise about it, maybe something can be done. We don't have to go by camel, you know. A jeep would bring us there in no oh, time. Oh, no, you don't. You're not getting me mixed up in this. I won't go... Now, listen. We'll go to the chaplain, to Rabbi Mahler. I talked with him yesterday. Maybe he can make a pilgrimage or, or something. This dust is killing me. <laughs> is it much further, Rabbi? I think it's farther south. If you didn't drive like a maniac, you wouldn't raise so much dust. Well, I want to get there. So do we all. Slow down, you'll pass it. Stop. Stop. What's the trouble, Rabbi? No trouble. I think this is the place. <coughs> Let's have a look. Okay, everybody, pile out. Come on, Yom Tov. We're here. Look at him. He's glued to the spot. He's scared to death. So would you be if this was your first car ride. In a jeep at that. Come, Yom Tov. It's okay. We're all going into the field to see the carving on the rock. I, I did not know how it would be. <laughs> was it rough? <laughs> Like an earthquake and a dust storm all in one. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've had a jeep ride. Come, let's follow the others. Do the Americans fight always with jeeps? I think they will win all the wars. It is. It is! This is it! Here it is. I, Joab, son of Zeruiah, drove the Philistines to this point. This is it? But we traveled all this way to see this rock? Doesn't it make you feel good to know that once the Jews had powerful kings? It makes me feel good. Oh, we didn't have to come here for that. I knew it from the Bible stories. But here, look, touch it. Evidence. Hard as a rock. It isn't a legend. 
It's the real thing. It's been here thousands of years. Isn't that wonderful? King David's army, all the way to here. A Jewish king came here. His army came here to this point. From Jerusalem? No, from... I am going to Jerusalem. Nusea Atali Yerushalayim? Yes, I am going to Jerusalem. What time, Nusea Atali Yerushalayim? Someday. Soon. It is written in the prayer book. Every morning I say it. And my father said it. And all our grandfathers. What does it say in the prayer book, young lady? Tell us. Sound the great shofar for our liberation. Raise thou the banner for the ingathering of the exiles and assemble them from the four corners of the earth. Praised be thou, O Lord, who gathereth in the dispersed. <clears throat> You're probably right, Juntus. Someday you may go to Jerusalem. There is a Jewish king there? Not a king exactly, but perhaps someday a Jewish president. And that is even better. I will fall on my knees and kiss his hand. That will not be necessary, Yomtov. You can stand up. The time is fast coming when a Jew can stand up in Israel. And the land will be flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey. Milk and honey. <laughs> No, Palestine was not flowing with milk and honey. They tried to tell Yom Tov what was happening there. The Jewish men and women had thrown themselves into the war against Hitler with maniacal fervor. The doctors, nurses, personnel, the suicide squads at Tobruk. It helped to ease the hurt that lay deep in their bones. It helped to ease the smarting wounds and to pay in part a score that could never be paid in full. And still, a Jew could not stand up in the land of Palestine. At last, the terrible war was over. The war was won. The Redeemer saw the face of the redeemed. The reconstruction began. America poured her help into every jagged ruin, be it man or thing. The Jews counted their dead, and asked themselves, what now? And they turned toward the east. It was too soon. Another enemy lay there, snarling and growling, ready to spring. And spring he did, time after bloody time. There was work to be done, so much work. The years of bitter struggle bore sweet fruit. There came a day like no other day since the world began. It was a day of wonderment for Jews in every land. <laughs> Tel Aviv. Friday, the fifth day of Iyar, 5708. May 14th, 1948, at 4.06 p.m. The Republic of Israel is born. It was heard around the world. In Casablanca, Yom Tov Shabbat heard it, and the dream that had been lighted in him by those American army engineers burned brightly. He showed the heart of this dream to others, and they learned from him. Children! Children! This day, a new era begins. The era of the ingathering of the exiles. It is time for the morning prayer. Please rise and face the east. Repeat after me. Sound the great shofar for our liberation. Sound the great shofar for our liberation. Raise thou the banner... For the ingathering of the exiles. Raise thou the banner for the ingathering of the exiles. And assemble them from the four corners of the earth. And assemble them from the four corners of the earth. Praised be thou, O Lord, who gathereth in the dispersed. Praised be thou, O Lord, who gathereth in the dispersed. Those of you who are to receive eye treatments today will line up on the right. 
Those of you who are to receive scalp treatments, go to the left. We will march down to the new clinic in orderly fashion, so they will know we are not savages. When you come back to the classroom, you will receive a glass of milk. All those who are well and healthy will go to Israel. That is why we do not complain if it hurts a little. You understand? Very well. One, two, march. Oh, uh, do not put your hands on the beautiful fresh walls. The American Joint Distribution Committee had established a health and welfare program. The Alliance Israelite started schools. The Jewish agency provided personnel. The Jews of North Africa were bridging a gap of 2,000 years. It was not an easy thing to do. A nurse in white uniform with a hypodermic needle in her hand was so very different from the native doctor in the hills who slit a baby's skin to let the malady escape. Had these people known what the years held in store for them, they would have learned faster, studied harder. Yom Tov, Yom Tov. Quiet, don't you see our night classes in session? They are burning Jewish shops. Run for your lives. Wait, wait, David. We do not run. Students, there's trouble in the town. We shall put out the lights and wait quietly for as long as is necessary. When it's safe to walk the streets, we will leave two at a time in intervals, the same as last time. David, please put out the light. Thank you. Students, tonight I shall tell you the story of the two American engineers and how people vote in America. Voting is a matter for all. All men and women have a chance to declare themselves. In America, all men and women are considered to be equal. <laughs> When a Muslim and a Frenchman fight, a Jewish head gets broken. That surely. It is easier to vent one's anger on a man who has no gun. Uh, this land is no longer safe for us. I, the Lord, chastiseth whom he loves. Uh, let us hear what the young man is saying. And in Petitjean, seven Jews killed, sixteen wounded. Wounded and killed and burnings in Marrakesh. In Masagan, twenty-six Jewish houses burnt. In the small town of Uedzem, three killed, ten stores burnt, three homes. Quedvand, Safi, Bujad, same story everywhere. This is a black year for us. I have called you here for a purpose. Listen to me. The gates of Israel are open to all. <laughs> to an old one like me? Uh, and a blind one like me? To all, I said. Old and young, sick and well, rich and poor. Israel has declared an emergency. The gates are open. And uh, how will we go to Israel? On a velvet carpet in the sky, no doubt. <laughs> or perhaps the angel Gabriel will come. The Jewish agency will pay the costs for all. We will go by boat to Marseille. We will stay at the Aliyah camp for a few days, then sail for Israel and go to our temporary village as soon as we arrive. All families and relatives will be kept together. While we are learning to use the tools and the land, we will be paid a daily wage. Then we go to our permanent settlement. Every man to his trade, where needed. Yum Tav and his stories. Soon he will tell us about the voting. <laughs> we want refuge. We want food and shelter for our families. Who cares about his everlasting vote? Listen to me. You are going from the frying pan into the fire. There is fighting in Israel. They are surrounded by enemies on all sides, both at home and abroad. That is true. But where else have we so much to defend? The gates are open. A home is waiting. There is land to cultivate. Food for all. And freedom. Freedom. Freedom to fight and to die. Freedom to defend yourself. And if you survive, to live in dignity. You and your children's children forever. Listen to him. He does not talk like a fool. Hey, Yom Tov, you are coming with us? Yes, I will come. My work here is finished. I will go to Jerusalem. To Jerusalem. Darling, wake up. It's late. Mm -hmm. Ruth? What time is it? Nearly seven o'clock. The boat's coming in. Mm. 
Then it goes to the construction crew. Off to the suburbs. Don't they ever stop building? Open the shutters, dear, please. Ruth, I mustn't miss Yum Tub. Hurry, honey, please. The ship will be there all day. No, no, today's Friday. They'll probably hurry the people through and load them into the truck so they can get to Lahish early in time to get settled before the Sabbath. 50,000 North African Jews arrive in one year, and you're concerned with one refugee you hardly know. Yum Tub is not just a refugee. He's a pilgrim, and I feel I know him well. I know the heart of a pilgrim. Yes, I, I think you do. Oh, what a heavenly day. Look at Mount Carmel out there, shining in the sun. You'll look at it later. Come on. I wonder what your pilgrim will do here. Work? Fight? Let's ask him. Come on. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Meet me at the dock. Well, how will you find him? I'll find him. I'll have him paged. <laughs> Is this your man, sir? I found him in the immigrant shed having tea. Oh, thank you. Here is Yom Tov Shabbat, Casablanca. Yom Tov? Do you remember me? You know who I am? Shalom. Hani Yehudi. Yom Tov. <laughs> How are you? How are you, Yom Tov? You look wonderful. I am magnificent. <laughs> I, uh, I told my wife to meet us. There she is. Ruth. Honey. No, she won't believe it. He speaks English. He's going to teach. What are you going to teach, Umto? Your favorite subject. That man is not a thing. A man is God's work. Hello. Ruth, meet a pilgrim. <laughs> If you would like a copy of today's script, please send your name and address with 10 cents to cover the cost of postage to the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, 3080 Broadway, New York 27, New York. And now we take great pleasure in presenting Mr. Saul Margolis of Boston, Regional Chairman of Northern New England for the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Mr. Margolis. A man is not a thing. Man is God's work. This line at the end of our eternal light story today points out so simply, yet so strongly, the fundamental fact which forms the basis of all human aspiration. Man is unique in God's creation. Each man on this earth was created with a purpose. We are part of a cosmic plan. This idea of the ultimate was discussed in the first book of the Bible, in the book of Genesis. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Man then is not an item, a commodity, a piece of goods which can be bought, sold, or otherwise possessed. We are unique. We are created in the image of God. This very concept is at the foundation of American law and action. In our history, we have evolved a way of life which directs us as individuals and as a people to translate this idea into a daily pattern of life. The central question today for Americans is this. How can we best transmit to the peoples of other lands that which we have developed in our own? The two soldiers in our drama today stand out as products of our way of life. Through talking, exchanging ideas, and just knowing the young lad in Casablanca, they pointed out the uniqueness of being a man, not a thing. But talk and description seems inadequate. We will have to find a way through our action to teach the peoples abroad that we have been able to teach our own people here. I know no greater challenge to man. I know no greater opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Margolis. Our eternal light drama today, A Man is Not a Thing, was written by Rhea Weinstein. The music was written by Morris Mamorsky and conducted by Roy Shield. Cantor David Putterman sang the liturgical introduction. Featured in the cast were Mandel Kramer, Edward Asner, Ronald Liss, 
Roger DeCoven, Bob Hastings, Edwin Jerome, Guy Rep, Billy and Bert Harris, and Rita Lloyd. The narrator, Alexander Scorby, this is Mel Brandt. This has been an NBC Radio Network production, directed by Daniel Sutter. This weekly program is presented under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. This is the NBC Radio Network. Welcome back. Well, what of a powerful story. It brings home what uh, the foundation of Israel has meant for so many Jews who spent centuries suffering, and also the impact that American GIs uh, can and did have uh, during World War II. Fans of the great detectives of old-time radio will recognize the voice of Mandel Kramer, who was the last actor to play Johnny Dollar, uh, playing the more senior American officer who ended up traveling to Israel. Ed Asner, going by Edward Asner, in the 1950s, does well enough with his role. It's too bad that he's only in it for a few minutes, but this would just be one part towards the beginning of a really amazing acting career that would span seven decades. Now, probably for most listeners of the program, he's best known for the role of uh, Lou Grant on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. And that was his breakthrough role in 1970. And that was such an iconic character. And even, like, even his first episode where he interviewed Mary, and after she'd given some responses, he said to her, You've got spunk. And, you know, she and the audience thought this was a good moment. And he said, I hate spunk. And that's a moment that even people who don't really know a lot about that show know. Just a huge, iconic moment. And it was paid homage to countless times in popular culture. I've talked about on Great Detectives how... Uh, the Maltese Falcon was so often imitated and paid hom homage to. Uh, that whole line was like that when I was growing up as a kid. I watched cartoons where the, they would do that exact sequence. It seemed like every kid show would have somebody deliver the line, I hate spunk, after saying someone had spunk. It was only later that I learned what the origin of that was. I will admit that my exposure to Mary Tyler Moore show was kind of limited. But as Asner would play a big part in other things that I enjoyed. For example, he took on the role of J. Jonah Jameson in the 1990s Spider-Man uh, cartoons. And he took that character in a different direction. I think if you, you know, watch the earlier cartoons of, of Spider-Man, Jameson was really a pure comic foil. He was someone you laughed at without any real redeeming value. But the way it was written on Spider-Man the Animated Series and the way that Ed Asner played it, it really kind of fleshed Jameson out as a real person. Yeah, he still hated Spider-Man. He could still be a cheapskate. Yeah, he still had some funny moments and, you know, plenty of bluster, which I think, you know, Ed Asner played so well. But there was also, you know, he cared about people. He had a sense of right and wrong and ethics. He had some moments of real pathos. 
And while I respect what uh, J.K. Simmons uh, did in the uh, Spider-Man movies with Tobey Maguire, you know, and you know, now apparently reprising that role, I don't think you know anyone ever uh, performed it quite as well as Ed Asner. You know, and I don't just remember Asner for dramatic roles. He was also in a show that's much more obscure, a freakazoid. It was this kind of superhero comedy story. And he played the role of Cosgrove, who was this uh, police chief, who when the superhero freakazoid was in the middle of his case, he would show up and say something like, Hey, freakazoid, you want to go and get a mint? And it was just his delivery and the way he read the lines. It was that just made it so funny. Of course, if you're younger than me, the first memory of him might be in the movie Up, uh, Pixar's Up, which is just one of those you know, great classic Disney Pixar films. And that's really the thing about Ed Asner and his body of work, is that he has really entertained generations of viewers. And depending on how old you are, you may remember him for something entirely different. His IMDb profile has more than 400 entries, and he's got seven completed uh, projects that are going to be released uh, posthumously. And it's just, in many ways, so remarkable how much he appeared in. And things that you just wouldn't necessarily think of. I watched a Murdoch Christmas special uh, the, from the Murdoch Mysteries, and he was in that. He was in Cobra Kai. He was in Hawaii Five-O in the 70s, and then played the same character uh, for the Revive series in uh, 2012. It's just an incredible career that reflects a love for acting as a profession, not even getting into the screen and radio roles, but really acting in all of its different aspects. And if you can continue to work in a profession that you love and still uh, love what you're doing, into your 90s, that's definitely a great accomplishment, particularly if you are entertaining and touching people as you go. And that was certainly something that Mr. Asner was able to do. Well, that will do it for today, and I do believe that uh, we will uh, be back with you in a couple of months. Uh, if you do have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.